What's up everyone, welcome to today's video, welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel, thank you very much for tuning in. If you're trying to make some sense of the PlayStation's position and Xbox's position on the market right now, I think a story that one of my audience members told me is actually worthwhile to kind of understand what might be going on. It will provide some sort of a loose analogy, it probably won't be the best, but I thought the story was valuable. So, Mr. BDB5670, shout out to you, longtime audience member. And this story, he writes, this reminds me of Coca-Cola Wars. Coca-Cola has more of the global market share than Pepsi. So what does Pepsi do? Instead of trying to convert the Coca-Cola addicts to drink Pepsi, PepsiCo acquires Frito-Lay, 1965, this is a food and snack company and delivery company merger. So you may not like Pepsi, but you'll be enticed to buying their snack products at every retail or wholesale store wherever Coca-Cola is sold. This strategic move Pepsi made back in 1965 paid off, stocks are doubled, sometimes triple of what the competition is. I believe Phil Spencer is pulling a Pepsi move on Sony, I kid you not. When I saw this, I was a little shocked because I didn't even really know this. So I hop on the internet and I immediately start carving through as much of what I can see. Now, I'm not certain about the history if Pepsi Cola made that particular buy because they owned a little part of the market share. However, the move was strategic because by that time, Frito was a company that made corn chips and a company that's now called Lay's, which was actually named after the owner, had actually been in a merger. And then somewhere, somehow, Pepsi Cola thought, or Pepsi Cola thought it was actually wise to go ahead and acquire them. And this has been pretty much a huge market share in the food category for them. This is crazy because the Frito-Lay part of their business makes them 44% of their revenue. So ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about Game Pass and we talk about it being a black swan, I don't think a lot of people really realize that this is a market share that the competitor has not necessarily been competing in for a while. You see... The whole online rent a game on the internet type deal and whatnot, in my opinion, I thought one of the bigger players at one point was actually PlayStation. They had PlayStation Now. You could actually go on there and you could actually get yourself some games. Now, you could only stream them. And I think the community of gamers kind of thought it was kind of scummy because it kind of put backward compatibility as a joke because you couldn't play these PS3 games on your PS4, but you could stream them because the technology would not let you do it which is a whole bunch of hokey now that we know how these hardware devices work. Yes, there were differences back then, and possibly some games would not have been able to leverage it. However, if PlayStation wanted to get the job done, they would have incentivized for publishers and developers to probably go ahead and do it. And if some games were not able to do it and they were beloved games, some publishers would have seen the incentive to make a backward version possible for people who already owned the game or for people who wanted to buy the game. So it's not necessarily that that was the case. But when you think about Game Pass, it came up with this particular strategy while a lot of folk on the internet continue to run their mouths. This is the problem about running mouths all over the place when nobody wants to actually sit down and look at the prevailing data that is in front of them. So when you take into account what the prevailing data is stating, you'll see that this has basically gone along in its own way to make Microsoft a bunch of money under the Xbox banner where Sony is not even complete, you know, com uh, competing at all. Because see, the thing is, Sony's PlayStation has games that some gamers want. We, you know, now these gamers will have you believe that it's more of them than actually are when most of them are playing Call of Duty and Fortnite and these other games, right? However, when you think about it, Xbox has decided that we're just going to go to a place and we're going to work on value proposition. And so as Sony's PlayStation did not follow suit immediately, they were left behind in that market because it just seemed like that market was not necessarily going to do anything. But now that the numbers are coming out, now that we're starting to see the data, including the data of PlayStation's own profits for the 23 fiscal year actually being 60% lower. Did you not see that report? Did y'all see it? Did you see it? This is just coming out from their documents that their Europe... Uh, you know, profitability fell by a huge margin. This is the same Europe that people are citing that they're actually selling their consoles four to one, you know, three to one, three PlayStation consoles to one Xbox console. The hardware market in this gaming scene is too versatile. 
the change in PC hardware has literally upended the entire console paradigm. Ladies and gentlemen, right now on the internet, you can buy a CPU that can develop a game for under a hundred dollars. Did you hear what I said? You can buy a CPU that you can use for game development for under a hundred dollars. Do you know what that does to your PC build? You can actually leverage a strong core of your computer build that you can use for multiple in quote generations of consoles while you're still able to upgrade only your GPUs. And with the holiday in place and with retail being kind of shoddy because nobody wants to spend money, you can get very good deals on your GPU and come out with a $600 build that would do way better than a console. Oh yes, I know, the $100, where are you gonna get that $100 from? It's in the cost of your video games and the cost of your subscription that you have to have. I mean, <laughs> we don't pay that on a PC platform and the games are less expensive on here. When you run the numbers, like one of my audience members was trying to argue with me that a PC is so expensive, you gotta spend thousands of dollars. And I get these comments all the time and I'm like, the best thing you can do is you probably need to go ahead and look and say, are these people talking about the PC platform? Are they really about the fact that you can get good builds for a good amount of money? The answer is yes. And they will perform better than a console. They will do more than a console would do at the very least. So if that's actually the issue, then this is pretty much it. So the hardware market right now has changed and it seems Xbox kind of saw that they had some way to leverage a PC platform and leverage these other, you know, what I call slightly decentralized areas to be able to go put their games and they immediately pursued it because the hardware sales were, was not something that they were gonna go ahead and win. I mean, if you hear somebody growling, that's my little kid. Uh, you know, they they decided that, you know, she's gonna be in this video, so she's just gonna growl over the recording and I'm not gonna re-record this, nope. But anyways, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Uh, what do you think about the Pepsi Cola style strategy or possibly maybe it's not, but it seems like it is, that Xbox is taking on, you know, in their approach for, you know, competing. Talk to me. Peace out.